So what, what's going to happen is we have four startups, a fifth one, one among you, if you're lucky. We have three minutes pitching time. No slides except maybe one for showing the product or an online demo, if it works. They pitch three minutes. After that, you have five minutes to either roast them like really hard or to give them feedback of how they become, can come, become from local striving startups to global players. All right. Everything clear? Ready to go? Any, any introductory words from yourself? Check, check. Uh, how's everybody doing? That was, uh, that was pretty fucking lame. I just got here. I, took, I tried to get past a hurricane to get here, so you guys better like, think this is fucking worth it. How are you doing? All right. That's better. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just with Dave. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The first startup is Rails on Fire. Are you guys on fire and ready? <laughs> Rails yeah. on fire. Thank you. Hi. Hey, is it time to start drinking yet? Yes. Okay, hey guys, my name is uh, Moritz. I'm one of the co-founders of Rails on Fire, and we also want a beer. No, um, cheers. Um, Sorry, our product more. is um, for developers. Um, we help developers to create their software more efficient, um, better, faster, and in a um, safer way. So it's a really technical product, and we will pitch it directly to Dave. So we are really sorry if it's maybe a bit too geeky and too much geek vocabulary. Um, but Dave, if you have any questions, just ask us directly, interrupt uh, us, and ask us. What about me? And Colette, you will, of course, <laughs> also understand what, it. What am I, decoration? No, 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 no. You are just... <laughs> You, you said that you have read there. You guys are <laughs> so you're, I'm not you're, supposed to get roasted, your people. Your pitch is already on fire on the butt rails. So, of course, Colette, um, we are looking forward to your questions, too, of course. Um, that is Flo, and he will pitch you the product. I will tell you more about the business side of our cool. startup. OK, uh, hey, everybody. Uh, hey, Dave and Colette. So basically, our product is a hosted continuous integration deployment tool. That basically means, as you said, we help people push out their stuff further and every day, every single day, a lot more often. Because teams today, they need to release code daily or as fast as they can to improve the product on, on as fast a cycle as they can. And we help them with a tool that exactly supports that. Uh, our longer term vision is not just to have this tool that is in place. We have our paying customers already. But as, as Ash Moria presented today, this dashboard that gives you the overview of the current status of your application, where it stands, where the problems are, and that integrated in our base tool that is very technical, as you said already. Um, Dave, you may know the CircleCI team that is in the same space as we are. The longer term vision is different, uh, because they, for example, that could be an integration point for us as well in the future. Um, but they are in that space. Um, okay. Yeah, the next steps for us as a team are we have paying customers, we have, we know, we got the feedback, what do we have to build next? So until the end of the year, we want to build um, the new dashboard, the new application that, that we got from the feedback. Do you, do you have a product that's live currently? It's, we have paying customers. It's live, you it's have running. For, we have okay. paying customers for the product. Approximately how much and how much do they pay you? So we have now around 20 to 25 paying customers okay. because we started with payment two weeks ago. Great. Uh, we wanted to nail the product really before, it, before we got uh, to paying customers. Okay. And yeah. And so, how much are they paying you? Uh, around twenty uh, dollars. So per, per, month, per, per month. Per okay. month. Per month. Per customer. Awesome. Can um, you uh, can you live on five hundred bucks a month? Mm, that's uh, so no, <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. But okay, you better get some more customers then. There. The I mean, <laughs> that's that's obvious. That's the overall goal. So maybe a few more information about the business side. And they pay nine to fifty dollars per month, but we'll uh, add more expensive plans in the future as soon as we have more um, complex features for bigger teams. Um, we have a partnership with Heroku, um, which is the biggest platform as a service provider in the U.S. Okay. And, and one with Cloud Do they Control. know they have a partnership with you, or do you of just course, think you have a partnership? Of course they know. We get 20% of our customers. So they are driving... You get 20% um, of your 25 customers from Heroku? Of our users and customers. Okay. Yeah. Wow. They've sent you five whole customers. No, they sent us 450 users, but a couple of customers. Okay. But nevertheless, it's... I Why mean, did it's, they choose to partner with you? Because um, they because are... Because you're a broke-ass little company with no financing and no money. 
Exactly, and they wanted to help us. No, but um, oh, as, as, you, as you probably know, is, um, Heroku is um, building a platform, and they need uh, uh, several add-ons, which um, really... Um, You're screwing yeah. somebody's girlfriend. Why? Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. No, no, I'm serious. Like, why the fuck would a company like Heroku uh, have a partnership with a small startup? Because that's basically... Um, because you're awesome! That's what you're supposed to fucking say! Exactly. But, like, what <laughs> about you being awesome? <laughs> No, seriously, like if you're, if you're some dippy little startup and you got a partnership with some big ass company, two things are going on. Either you're fucking crazy or you're something special. So like, which is it? We are fucking special and it's not just, I mean, it's, it's, and, 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 and not and in the no, Olympics, no, no. Uh, and, and special it's, Olympics It's not kind of just way. about Heroku because we also have Cloud Control, which is the, the big, um, biggest black Cloud so, Control, okay. Yeah, they're from Europe, so I, maybe you don't care that much about them, but they are the biggest one from Europe. And um, they also like us, and they also think that we are awesome. Okay. And they are driving customers to us without um, really what, spending. What do you a lot guys do there. that nobody else does? We focus Dead more. fucking silence. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Um, if you compare us to our competitors, we focus more on the deployment side. So it's not just about testing, because testing and the continuous okay. integration is just the first step. And we want to automate basically everything between GitHub and similar services out there and Heroku. So it's just a one-click solution, basically. And in the long run, we also want to um, integrate um, third-party applications and the whole um, metrics to, to build this dashboard. Um. Okay. Don't, go, don't go pitching everything just because I'm giving you a hard time. Just like focus on the one thing. Uh, do you get the shit? Sort of. No, no you don't. Come well, on, stop well, fucking lying. Dave, you're looking I at porn while we're yeah, up here, so I'm a little bit... This is not porn. <laughs> this is their website. <laughs> Um, Maybe we'll pivot. So, so I think I get you do something around deployment for Rails. Be besides that, I don't know why you do that better or different than anybody else, yeah. or why Heroku needs you. Get back to the developers. Okay. Basically, the point with Heroku and all these platform as a service providers is they live on that people deploy a lot of the times, every single day, and they need okay. to have their applications changing all the time. That's why they are so okay. much. And what does Heroku not do very well that you help fix for them? Pardon? What does Heroku or anyone else not do well that you fix for the them? The whole process, they only care as, long, as soon as you deploy there. But that's the whole process okay. before that, how you get the stuff out so there. So they in got a, safe a shitty way. deployment solution and you make it awesome. Mm -hmm. Exactly. OK. We make Let's it much it easier and better for them. Let's leave it at that for right now. OK. So do we have more time? Uh, yeah, the three minutes were obviously up already, but we just <laughs> see, yeah, we seamlessly went to the roasting part, as you can tell. So you have a few more minutes. Yeah, so oh, that wasn't roasting. Come so on. So maybe, um, <laughs> maybe a few more information about our, our next steps. Um, we are currently fundraising, and we want to hire two more, or we're going to hire two more developers because we want to speed up um, the product development. We okay. know exactly what to build um, in the, let's say, next three to the six six months because we got a lot of feedback from our paying customers and we are going to relocate to the US um, at the oh, really? beginning or at the latest at the beginning of next year. Why? Because all the big players, all our partners like Heroku, like Engineart, like Google, uh, Google App Engine, they are all in the US. All the, the major technology players are in the US. So all the really good people from Europe who are working in this space are also in the US. So are you looking for money from European VCs, American VCs, Dave? Mm -hmm. Dave, of course, um, but um, besides that, um, we are most probably raise money in Europe because nobody cares about us in the US. Um, it's like that. Um, so we oh, raise here, jump to this. That's I know, I, I, I don't say that this is a problem, but um, it's Americans just. Americans um, are such jerks. We are. I know. <laughs> yeah, but um, that's why we will raise um, in, in Europe and then we will. You don't have to too quickly there. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, well. Uh, have a nice guy here in investing us. I, I'm still not sure I get what the magic is here, because you guys have a small number of customers at a small price point. I sort of understand there's some, pre there's some partnership with Heroku for some reason, but not exactly clear why. It's, uh, you know, I haven't been a developer recently, so I'm not sure I'm up to speed on what the differentiation is. But I do hear a lot of pitches from people that are doing deployment in a Rails environment. So I guess, do you guys, do people in the audience get why they're different or special? Uh, are there any developers in the room? Up, shut yeah. up for a second. <laughs> People who would be developers who would use this product. Anybody using this product in the room right now? Tell Where? Us about Stand it. up. Stand up. You're not paid by them or sleeping with their girlfriends or something? Okay. So, no, but tell us, tell us why you like them. Let's hear it from you. Get the mic. Yeah. That's actually somebody I even know. Uh, yeah, we know you. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we use them. Um, it, it's, I think for us, it's like the 
demonstrates this really well. This is the integrated thorough move seamlessly in the Nintendo Touch Cross. And also, like for us, the most interesting is probably the analytics part in the future. Analytics? Yeah. Okay. Understanding basically what I'm right now, we don't know if the developer is English, we do this on stage, but not the production. But by the way, just note for the audience, they must suck really bad that I'm asking some of the audience to pitch their startup. But. Sure. <laughs> I think they're good guys. Oh, they're good guys. Oh, okay, well, I'll finance them now. <laughs> That's a good reason. No, but, uh, so, like, we are using it and it works well, right? It's just like, it's, it's like... You use it and it works well. That's the weakest ass endorsement I've heard. Don't roast the audience, Dave. Well, no, I still don't know why it's like awesome. Nobody's like said, hey, no, yeah. this thing gets me laid. It's so awesome. Whoa. It's like, oh, this, this solves a, my problem, uh, kind of. Yeah. All right, da 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 David Collette, I can definitely see you having a lot of fun here, but we have to be fair to the other okay, startups. Yeah. So. All right. So uh, you do something kind of cool for developers, and I like the name, but I still, we took like three, five minutes to figure out like why you're awesome, and I think that needs to be a little bit more specific and perhaps relative to competitors more defined. But anyway, good luck. Uh, sounds like Heroku thinks you're worth partnering with, so that's awesome. So Give it up for Raise of Fire! You want me to hold that here? You get it for me, I'll hold it. <laughs> I think we might as well, it's better. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. Eight minutes for all yeah. All right, change, change of program. Instead of three minutes pitching first and five minutes roasting, it's basically pitching and roasting at the same time for eight minutes. We have not, this not great new too product. It's called you, continuous you roasting. It's awesome. Are you are you ready? Are you ready? I will. Yeah, can we put up the slides on the screen, Let's please? Slow down because not everybody speaks. So. Hi, I'm Katerina, founder of a beautiful app named Spock, which okay. stands for Shop in Your Pocket. So what is it? Spock is a mobile yard sale for beautiful things nearby. So it makes selling and buying used goods really easy and a lot of fun. We launched the app about a month ago and already got great feedback from the users. So how does it look like? When you launch the app, you're having a, a, the home screen and you see a lot of products from, uh, the, from people around you. So it's a little bit like window shopping in your neighborhood but instead of shops are selling, other neighbors are selling their stuff. So, and when you scroll down on the screen further, the more far away you go. When you find something, a product you like, you just tap on it and see more information, see a description, a price, and also where it's located. Now you can start making the seller an offer and see to get a good bargain. Once you agreed on a price, um, you can also use the app to arrange where to meet, to switch item and goods. And on the other side, when you want to sell something, it's as easy as buying. So just take out your smartphone, make a picture, type in a title, a short description, a price, that's it. it. Your offer is out for sale. Compared to other platforms like eBay um, or local country leaders, it's much simpler to use and also much more fun to scroll through it to find something in Except both Except that ways. eBay has hundreds of thousands of sellers and millions of buyers. Absolutely. Uh, so I think they have um, online and mobile 100 million okay. um, users. So um, I think I get the basic idea about mm -hmm. what you're doing. Uh, it looks kind of cool. Um, but uh, distribution is going to be the major challenge for startups that are trying to get started in this kind of auction process. So how do you solve mm -hmm. the initial get enough critical mass problem? Yeah. Um, so first, it was just a side project for us. Uh, we launched about a month ago in Austria, and we're pretty amazed that we're having 10,000 downloads in the first month. So, and this just in little Austria, which is a big number for that market. How many um, people in Austria? Um, Seven million yeah. um, people in Austria, so it's mm -hmm. 10 times less than Germany. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we're having thousands of offers um, in all categories. The sort of critical mass in the business, you're probably going to need a much larger number of users. Um, you might Definitely. be able to concentrate in a couple of particular verticals. So um, any, any specific focus on types of products or And what services? we are seeing now, um, due to the design, as it's very beautiful, people are really putting in beautiful stuff. Yeah. So this okay. is really an asset you find not just cheap 
um, crappy stuff, you find really lovely things in there. Hey, if people buy cheap crappy stuff, that's fine. That's like, too. That's also. So, I'm actually, I'm actually curious. Do you find your, you have more, is more skewed towards women or men? Like, where, you know, are you seeing any kind of trends in the data that you're getting back? I don't know the number about yeah. women and men at the moment. Yeah. I think it's quite of even. Yeah. Um, but we see from from the categories, most products are in fashion, but also in the other categories. Okay. Um, shouldn't the you know the, are quite Shouldn't evil, you know demographics uh, or not? What? Shouldn't you know the demographics, or is that I something you know, can? I should know, right? Yes. <laughs> but I'm more yeah. focusing on the downloads right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you have an estimate of conversion of downloads to active use or uh, um, transactions process? We are having about 3,000 products in there. Okay. It's Facebook registration only, which is in the US easier than in Europe. But we wanted okay. to focus on this to to have less cameras and yeah, to 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 more better products also. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's about 2,500 users in there, and for okay. the for the first month, it's about 450 sales. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so my, my guess is you'll probably be better off by trying to focus on a few specific product vertical areas rather than trying to do everything. Yeah. So I would uh, focus on what you think are most likely or most distinct ways that you can kind of get in a particular vertical, whether that's, you know, consumer electronics or other types of goods or something. I completely agree. When I start thinking about in terms of marketing and how this thing needs to spread really quickly, you know, if you're everything to everybody, it, you want th people to be able to make a quick hook, like, oh, I can go here, you know, for, you know, used Apple products or whatever, because you have to be able, you know, people have so many choices that you need to have a reason to spring to mind, like, first and kind of hook them. What we now hear is people are using it because it's really easy. So it's easy to sell something and it's easy to buy, and we don't force them to any 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 reason. And we yep. see that they're using for everything. We also see sales for everything. Right. So they're, It's they're really tempting, though, to be there. everything to everybody. It's really tempting. You really need to have the discipline. I and think if you are on the second, uh, second goods market, then um, it's hard when you say, I'm just focusing on, I don't know, electronics. You're, you're um, limiting your space. So you're targeting to one person who is, a is able to sell everything, and they have everything at home. You it's don't not, need to, to, to yeah. but you don't think but that much. Um, it's not that you have so to limit yourself to that. Market. It's just where you focus the marketing mm -hmm. effort. It's not that you have to limit to one or two categories. It's just that might be where you focus yeah. the initial what we are, marketing What we are doing, what we are planning on, is a very decent local marketing strategy. So okay. if you want, you can, we can later talk about this more, more in detail um, okay. in private. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so I think we're beating a dead horse on this, but I would just say, you know, uh, historically it's been challenging to get critical mass for services like this. Uh, there are a lot of new services that are launching that are doing peer-to-peer -peer based selling and are very smartphone and easy to use based. So, yep. I mean, that's on target, but you're still going to face a lot of competition. There's still going to be challenges getting to a critical mass number of sales. That's true, yeah. Maybe. So anyway, good luck. Thank you. All right. I'm just going to hold it, so when you need it. But I mean, that was more of talking, not roasting. <laughs> okay. We want to feel the heat, right? Yeah, we want to yeah, feel the heat. Okay. My, my job is to be the nice guy to Dave's yeah, really it. mean, angry guy. Yeah, you can play good I, cop, I didn't think cop. I was being particularly nice there. I guess I think maybe so too, I wasn't actually. being as much of an asshole. But. Have more beer. Do okay. <laughs> you want one? Can we... Yeah. I, I, no, no, he's still working good. on it. All right. I have a keynote later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Is there anyone using Spock in the room? Oh, pretty good. They, they front loaded it. I think he said it's great. Who the fuck are you and why should I listen to you? For, uh, I, wait, 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 wait. Do you have a vested interest in the company, be fair? Absolutely not. Are I'm you sleeping with anybody in the company? <laughs> Absolutely not. That, that Absolutely joke's getting not. a little I just, old. I just, <laughs> I just downloaded it. I saw it on Facebook. I, 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 I'm putting my products there because it's so fucking easy. I, don't, I hate eBay. It takes time so, so, so long. And there are nice products on it. I just like the products. Right. So That's we it. went over this already, but like, easy to use? Got it. Yep. And yes, a hundred fucking people are going to make like mobile apps easier to use. Do you get that critical mass is absolutely important for this? 
this, and you're going to make no fucking money unless you get to probably thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of sales per month. But so like you're you minimally <laughs> nowhere fucking near that number, and like you got to get to that number, and you're not even charging for listings yet. So like, sorry, I haven't been an asshole yet, but if you haven't heard me, critical fucking mass is the essential element of that particular product, and she's not there yet. She's got 10,000 downloads. Conversion to active use is probably like single digit percentages. Conversion to actual sales is probably a single digit percentage of that, and it's not fucking that interesting yet. So good, good try, keep fucking working on it, but you're not gonna convince me it's interesting right now just cause it's ease of use. That's not the critical issue for that product. Good to have the old day back. Sorry, you forced me to be the asshole that I really didn't want to be there, but now I am. Awesome. Dave, good, good, to, good to have you back. Good to have you back. No. Um, so, the next startup. It's Copygram, so give it up. What's up? Thank you. You're giving me shit. That's kind of interesting. Hi. My name is Linus, and I'm the co-founder and product designer of Copygram. Okay. And what do we do? We, we, uh, we started about a year ago looking into Instagram because we simply love uh, the community. And when we started, they only had like 5 million users, and now they're at over 100, so it's great. So we built an amazing web interface which allows everyone to browse and share Instagram content on their favorite device, like laptop, uh, iOS uh, tablet or Android tablet, and also people that don't have Instagram can use our service to watch and share uh, content from Instagram. So the, you print photos from Instagram? Oh yeah, that, but that's what we do too. We, we got to have revenue, man. So okay. we added a layer on top of the problem that we fixed. Like we we want we want to change the way people consume photography. You know, today you have to go through this many different steps. Sorry, up. sorry, did I miss something else? What uh, what else do you do other than print photos from Instagram? Oh, d didn't you get? We have an amazing web interface that allows everyone to share and uh, consume content from Instagram. Isn't that Instagram? Ah. Oh. <laughs> God, David, you just <laughs> funny, don't funny get guy. it. <laughs> I, I admit I am fucking stupid, but... Uh... So Instagram is locked up on a small device that fits in your hands. Do you want to browse photography that way? No. You want to browse it on Facebook? That's good. That's working. But do you get immersive? Do you spend eight minutes browsing a single person's feed on Facebook? No. People do that on our site. They tend to spend more time using our service than actually... So a web-based service for we'll... viewing Instagram photos and sharing them? Yeah. That's called Flickr, right? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I must say I don't fucking get it, but... Uh... Keep do, going. Do, Keep do going. an elevator pitch. We have a website that serves Instagram content to anyone. And then to make money, you can buy your own photos. We make everything local in Sweden and ship internationally from day one. So in the first 30 days, we ship product to over 25 countries. Okay. Our target audience are creatives, photographers, writers, bloggers, early adopters. We have some of the first users on Instagram use our service, which is huge for us. We're very, very data driven. So we know what our users do. For instance, the first quarter this year, July to September, we tracked over a million action likes through our website. Okay. And the first this month, we tracked over 600,000 likes. So we're growing rapidly on that pace too. Okay, so how, how many users do you have? We have 32,000 active users and we're growing every day. Uh, our traffic is growing by 10.7% each week. And uh, we have a monthly revenue about $7,000 today, so that's not cutting anything, what, but... What about rights? Rights? Yeah. Uh, you're not allowed to buy anyone else's photos. You're only allowed to buy your own photos due to copyright laws. So when you use the service, you can buy your own photos, but you cannot buy anyone else's photos. Do you get it? Yeah, but wouldn't it be better if you could buy other people's photos? <laughs> it would be great. It would be great if anyone could sell the product on our site and get kickback back from that. That would be amazing. So that's a good thing. That's something that we're looking into. But it's not been our main goal to focus on that in the beginning because we're bootstrapping the company. So, sorry, that's my team. We're four people again. and we work okay. everyday jobs you. and we do this as a hobby. So we don't have any funding and it's our hobby. 
And we love okay. it because we love photography and we love to bring Instagram to anyone. And Instagram is an amazing platform. They surpass Twitter. They have more active Dude, I, users. I know, I know Instagram. I've heard of it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, so you haven't I'm heard about us. I'm trying to get like, what do you do for Instagram? You help people sell their photos? No, we, we help people to, to be more immersive with people's feeds, like to, to, to consume photography in another way. It's a very emotional thing. Like people consume act, photography. You, yeah, mean, how do you look consume? at it. Yeah, right? you look at it. How do you okay. want to do that? Do you want to do it on a small screen in your hand or you want to do it Dave, on a large screen? Dave, don't you want screen? to buy your own photos? <laughs> don't you want to have what your... What is your freaking problem? <laughs> Yeah, Dave, what's your fucking problem? You can buy your own photos. I'm, I'm a stupid, dorky American. That's my problem, I think. Um, <laughs> okay, well, somehow you've got like tens of thousands of users and yeah. some money, so somebody must not think you're an idiot. Um, so <laughs> Mostly creative people, though, so it's... Oh, uh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why don't we... How, no, about, how about the no, wait, audience? Were you ripping on creative people, or were you suggesting that I was ripping on creative people? <laughs> uh, and why? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just, anybody here like want to help me out? Yeah, Are you missing? Audience, who's using it? What do we think? Anyone want to? Is I see anyone using green. it? Over there, green. Yeah, you. Wait, stand up, stand up. Are you one of the honestly guys? All right, you're one of the honestly guys. Yeah, give it up honestly. So, getting back to the, what do you do? Yeah, what you do you sell do? fucking Instagram photos, right? Oh, that's a good thing. Yes, put the it that answer way. is yes, we sell Instagram <laughs> we photos. We sell fucking Instagram it's not like, photos. like, no, we do other shit. <laughs> you sell Instagram photos, right? Yeah, we do it. Right. You and we have a good do turnover, the, too. You maybe do the news feed for Instagram better than Instagram. Yeah. I don't know if that's a long-term sustainable advantage. It's that, not. Right. That sounds a little challenging. <laughs> Because you're not Instagram and you're not Facebook, but Correct. okay. But Facebook don't want to kill but Instagram. So somehow you're providing a monetization service that Instagram and or Facebook don't provide for Instagram. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why are you like sending me off on a fucking rat hole chase? Because I love to see you smile. Okay. <laughs> Interesting way to develop a relationship. Question. Uh, yes. Oh, so what, 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 we do... Oh, we, we got somebody else from the audience question. who wants to talk. Just shout. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get you. Sorry. I, th I think he does do that, he just hasn't been pitching it that way. <laughs> yeah, we actually built the service because we love watching photos online instead of in the phone, and we don't want to put our phones up when we're at work because the boss looks at you so in a strange way. Me, that, that so we, we, we built a website resonate. instead, and actually people loved it, and they're using it, and we're growing. Um, last day we had like 200,000 page views, whatever, okay. I don't know. We have people using the service. Right. Okay, and do they use it on both mobile and web? Yeah, they do. Okay. Uh, we target do people buy on both mobile and web? We don't provide um, uh, the shop on mobile, no. Not on tablets, but not on phones. Okay, and the reason is mobile shopping sucks, mobile checkouts painful, no, or what? No, uh, we, we haven't had time, actually. We, we're oh, bootstrapping, so we're trying out things, touching okay. different areas. And but you will plan to... Yeah, that would be amazing, okay. yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so I, I feel like you're over-pitching or like taking me <laughs> off track on this. Like, it's a great thing to be able to help people sell their Instagram photos, yeah. and I think, you know, when I asked you about that more, you sort of like said, oh, we do all this other shit, and I... I think you're sort of missing the point of your own company. Like, you oh. help people sell and print out photos. They, they don't sell photos. You buy your buy photos. Your uh, besides, besides... I was not kidding when I said that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. Besides that, the time is up. Yeah, um, okay. Okay, got it. No, it, it, this is what is incorrect, unfortunately. Um, can I say something? Sure. Not for you, but like for all the startups out there. I think if you ask... You heard a lot about failure today, okay? If you ask me personally, the number one reason why startups fail is because the people who are in these companies don't listen. 
They don't listen to the market. They don't listen to evil Sith Lords to give them feedback what they should oh, do. It doesn't mean and that Dave's right. Let me be really no, clear. It should no, <laughs> I, I'm not saying he's right, but like, you know, just taking the feedback, yeah, exactly. thinking about it, and automatically saying no, it's not true will help you more uh, than Whether my else. feedback is correct or not, it should be clear that I was confused and your pitch did not help me become unconfused. But I think, <laughs> I think, that I'm I think, stupid, I think Dave's but... given you the, the tools to actually just be real simple Thank about it. Be up front. Yeah. Yep. Right, give it up for Cover Graham. Cool. $7,000 a month. That's enough, that's enough to... Can we get uh, up the screen? Uh, All right. Uh, so next company, Instant Do, and I think he needs some motivational power over here, so give it up for him. Instant Do. Oh, that's a shame, that would have been cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Peter, I'm co-founder of Instando, a young Slovak startup. Today I'm going to pitch you our vision, we are very early phase, but today many conferences are still stuck in the past century. Even at an event like this, the Pioneers Festival, most of the conversation is one side. The speakers, the moderators talk, and we, the audience, just listen. If you think about it, just like uh, on Web 1.1, or 1.0, <laughs> sorry, there is a big loss, because the, the audience is full of creative potential, right, which could be used. And this potential is missing right now. Our vision is to unleash this potential for the conferences. At Conference 2.0, you will no longer be just a passive observer of what's going on, but you can become an active shaper of your experience. And how we want to do it? The foundation of Conference 2.0 will be an interactive wall, which will look something like this. It will serve <laughs> as a communication platform for organizers, for the speakers, and for the participants. Uh, the participants at the same time will have an access to a simple web application which they, will, they can use to interact with the website. So just imagine a speaker has a question for you. You can very easily answer that question through your mobile phone and it will also display on the, on the wall. And also share what's going to ha happen next. So what should I talk next? For example, the speaker can ask, and instantly you can, you can give him your feedback. Uh, another example could be, for example, a speaker has, uh, or you have a question for the speaker. Uh, and I think we have some technical problem here. <laughs> but we'll sort it out. So right immediately, you can use the web application to ask the question and see it immediately on the wall. And also vote which question should be answered at the end. So these are just very simple examples of what the wall can do for the organizers. But if you think about it, if you in, in implement this communication platform at any event, it can open up completely new possibilities. The audi audience can suddenly have a chance to co-change, co-shape the agenda, and also start creating a content on its own. So what about a UX workshop during a break? Or how about some spontaneous pitch contest? Uh, in some of the side rooms. Let the audience decide what they want to do. And, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we are just uh, developing this product right now and it seems the internet connection. It's Wi-Fi, it's not your product. Okay, the Wi-Fi sucks. <laughs> but, but really, what we want to do here is to give you the audience to unleash your potential and give you the ability to interact and to make the event uh, your own. That's, that's it, and uh, there should have been some provocative questions which should guide you, but there are not. So, so uh, you... just, just to finish, if you want, if you have any questions for me, you can go to instando.com and just ask the question, and if the internet connection starts working again, the questions will, this will be displayed there, and you can vote which questions I should answer to you. Uh, so, if you want to try it out. Okay, guys, I, I can absolutely, first of all, thank you, so bravo. Thank you. And I know exactly what David's going to ask next, so go, David. <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, I think I got the basic idea. You're trying to provide a, an active, guided back channel for the audience. Uh, you're providing questions, and then you get feedback. So I mean, it's a reasonable model. Uh, I think there probably is some value there for conference organizers and, and people who are on stage. Um, is that 
the only thing that you're doing on the question yeah. side? Or? Is there, is there no. more? That what's coming next? Actually, do, so, do you have customers and do people pay you right now for this product? So we are, we're testing the, this product actually in a little different form. This is our new pivot. So, so we're that would testing, be no. Hmm? So, do you have customers? So we don't have paying customers. We have right. conferences that some of the biggest okay. like uh, conference in Slovakia and also some events in the US, we already uh, okay. had who, this. who in the US? Anyone we'd recognize? Uh, it's okay if it's not. No, it's actually, I'm not sure, because it was a private event, so okay. I'm not sure if I can mention it, right. but it's a big security company mm -hmm. there. Okay. So how are they using it primarily? I'm sorry? How are those people who are using it but not paying you yet using it? So we were trying to test different features of, uh, of the application. Okay. So the most interesting was the, the wall, which provided to the audience the ability to control or moderate the discussion. So only the okay. questions which the audience wanted would be asked. And of course, also for the speaker, it was much easier to. OK. And uh, so you're collecting feedback on questions that you ask from the audience and displaying the results on screen as the presenter is talking? That's another, that's okay. another possibility. All right. And it, it gives you another. Because as the audience starts using it, it gives you another channel that which, through right. which you can communicate with the audience. And also okay. the audience can communicate back to you. So I get it. It just doesn't strike me that that's tremendously amazing. I would imagine mm -hmm. there's lots of other conference products that do guided back channels. So is there something you guys do that's different or better than other conference organization systems and or Twitter? So right now, most of the conferences are trying to use the Twitter wall, which, through which they are trying to sort some of these needs. But okay. Honestly, that's, that doesn't usually work very well. Does, so, does your product require that the users also download your product, or are they no. picking up the feed from Twitter or from the screen? Or how you, are they responding? You can respond either through the web, simple web application, or you can even respond through, through Twitter. So okay. you can choose your own way how to, how to interact. But right. the, the thing is, we don't want to provide some like, complex solution for the organizer. We just want to provide the interaction experience. And what we want to do different so is I that. So the assumption is there that it's unlikely lots of conference organizers are going to down your lap, download your application, at least until you're very visible and popular. So they're going to be using Twitter to respond? Yeah, so many of them right now are using the Twitter wall, but it's not really ma like matching the goals they want from the Twitter wall. So we will provide the best Twitter wall for free, and then add the features for some, for some money. And then once you create a channel, once you become an interaction standard, then suddenly you have another channels which you can use yeah. for future top offers or uh, something. Any comments, feedback from people in the audience who have used the product or might use the product? This woman who is waving both her hands <laughs> animatedly. Catch box, please. There are six sides to that cube. You have approximately a 13.6% chance of finding the most. So now there will be a question there, and I will be already answering. <laughs> Sorry, 16.6%. <laughs> the web without the web is just look. <laughs> you, you could have told me this I've got this great idea for a product when the internet's yes. not working. It's called a pencil. <laughs> No, this is, this is a very good point, and uh, I saw one of the companies which is actually doing something for conferences. They're also providing the Wi-Fi together with the product, yeah. which okay. is a good complementary product. All right, cool. I think we got it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Give it up, Frank Sindhu. This feature is an add-on to something else. All right. We're... Can you hear me? Yeah. Where's Tim? Who has the business cards that we draw off now? Special from the audience? Yeah. Oh, it's here. So, um, you want to draw? Sure. Dave's okay with that? You all right with that, Dave? As long as you don't draw a client, that's fine. Or a company that we've already invested in, <laughs> which is on there. That one? I didn't buzz. <laughs> Live. Is that a funded big company Why or not? Why is this so funny? I know this guy quite well. It's life agent, Mate, Matthew, come on stage. But, but that's the one you told me to pick. <laughs> no, wait, it was not, it was not, it was not You spoken. handed that one to me. No. Wasn't that the one I was supposed to pick? Well, like, no, no, honest, like I'm I have kidding. a reputation. It was, it was just, you just draw, right? I did, I did not look. Matthew, congratulations. Hello. Um, hey, it's good to see you. Now. Oh, nice to see you, hi guys. So what am I supposed to do? Uh, pitch. pitch. <laughs> it, 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 like, You're it, supposed it, it, to look. give Dave money. 
Yeah, so, uh, oh. like, uh, yes, um, you pitch, is, you talk what here. you do, okay. and then they roast you a bit, and they try to convince you it's good, and you sign a deal. Oh, tell wonderful, us about your company. Wonderful, wonderful, cool. So, hi, can I start? Yes. Yeah, go. Okay, so hi, guys, I'm Matthew. I'm from Slovakia, just like the guy next, uh, behind me, or before me, no, not behind me, no, that's you. Uh, we have a company called Quality Unit. What we're doing is a product called Life Agent. And what we're trying to do is increasing the customer experience and customer support level in companies. Because today there's a lot of different ways how you can interact with your customers. You can talk via email, you can do phone calls, you can do live chats, you can do your Facebook posts, you can do your Twitter messages, you have knowledge, fa knowledge boards, you have community forums. There's a ton of stuff how, how you can interact with the company. What we're trying to do, we're trying to integrate all of this into one place, into one dashboard, where then we intelligently distribute those interactions to different people in your company. So, for example, I know that John is a good guy for phone calls. So I distribute all the phone calls for him, but not for the whole day, but only for two hours, because only for two hours he can maintain the high quality of I their can customer do support. Okay, you can do longer, but okay. that's you. But there are like different things. So, for example, we automatically know if it's a question in Spanish, English, distributed from dif different customer support departments. We believe that customer support should not be do uh, done only by a customer support department, by the whole company. So that's what we're trying to do: is integrating all in one place and distributing the tickets to different different people. Right now, we're, um, we're based in Slovakia. I, I'm the guy sitting actually in Palo Alto and opening a branch for sales and marketing for, for the American states and American countries. So do you have users? Do you have yeah. customers? Oh, yes. Oh, uh, oh yes. We have finding? customers. We have users. Tell like, us we, about them. How do they pay? How do you make money? Sure. Thank you so much for supporting me. So, uh, <laughs> no, but seriously. I'm the good guy. So, we make money as a SaaS. Like there are two things we do. It's a monthly monthly subscription fee that you can pay 25, 29 bucks per agent or per seed in the per, and per month in the in the system, or you do a downloadable uh, version on your servers. Dave, you would be surprised. Seventy percent of our customers is downloadable. You can actually it's like seventy percent of our revenues are downloadable. Too. So I don't think the cloud is still there. A lot of people want to have their like internal data on servers inside of their their companies. And so how many customers have you got right now? Uh, right now it's around 200 paying companies okay. and around 1,000 that are in trials. Okay. Every month, like today, every month we have, what is it, 350 new trials in the, in the system. Have you, have you met with this guy, Mikkel, at uh, Zendesk? Have you done any chatting with those guys? No, not yet. No, we, I registered them. I know, I know they are, exist are, are and you, I know where their in, offices are. Are you interested in meeting them? Yes, definitely. Okay, we should talk. I would love Woo! to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's easy. I guess I, uh, one other question, are you guys already raised money yet or not? We're we'll self-funded. You're self-funded. So and and, and like, we're okay. happy with that right so now. So just a quick question, why would you want to meet Zendesk? I guess, aren't they a competitor? I want to know what they're doing. Like, I want to know, you know, know the competitors. You know, have your friends close, but your enemies closer. Sure, okay. You should not have said that publicly. Why? <laughs> oh, Mika, oh, oh, this is streaming? No, yeah, the internet doesn't work, is. so nobody's going to listen. No. Forget what I said. Yeah, this is all, this is all between us, guys. Yeah. Just us. No, I, I mean, I, I think if your objective is to have a meeting with them and then say no to getting bought, then you've just accomplished <laughs> that, so that's fine. <laughs> yes. Cool. Sounds like a useful product. I, I don't know the space that well, but uh, sure. I get what you do. Okay. Yeah, I get why I get, it might be useful. I like it a lot. Thank you, Colette. Thank cool. you. Thank you, Dave. Mm -hmm. Very good. Awesome. Cheers. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we're kind of out of time, but just maybe your summary of in two minutes your impressions. Advice. How about advice? What your impressions or advice in general? Like I've, I'm, I'm sure they appreciate it. Okay. So, so the format of this pitch was two to three minutes, no visuals for the most part. The last guy had visuals, but the other guys didn't yeah, for the most it part. It was like product demo, but no slides. OK. Kind of a mixed thing. Yeah, so I mean, I think your objective is in the first 30 seconds to get across what it is clearly that you do, and then hopefully in the next minute or so, why you're amazing at that or differentiated from other people. Mm -hmm. um, typically, if you have users, customers, revenue, you should get that out quickly yeah. in the first, you know, again, 30 to 60 seconds. Uh, particularly if you have significant amounts of any of those. Uh, if you don't have significant amounts of any of those, you'd probably want to state the basic unit economics for what would a customer pay 
uh, and maybe talk about their problems and how you solve them differentiatedly. So for the most part, I think people did an okay to poor job at presenting that information uh, at all, and certainly not quickly. Uh, and sometimes I was sort of drawing it out of them a lot more. So I think given that you only have you know, two to three minutes, you kind of want to like immediately hit the top three points. Uh, so whether those are user numbers, revenue numbers, uh, particular solution pain that you do better than other competitors, uh, I would try and get those out quickly and specifically. Uh, and I would also try and refrain from over-pitching. So consistently what people were doing was, I've got this awesome thing. Look, you can share stuff on Facebook. Isn't that awesome? And you're like, no, that's not actually that awesome. And so like, you don't want to over-pitch your solution because you lose credibility. In fact, you might want to go the opposite way, which is, well, we're still just working on this. We've got this one little thing, but it looks like it's working. And in the future, we might want to do other things. So like, build credibility by not over-pitching what the fuck you have, because I'm going to see through that pretty quickly once we talk about other things. Let me talk now. Sorry. Um, so I've worked in Europe for about 11, 12 years now, and I know that a lot of us want to be kind of American, and Americans are always using words like awesome and et cetera. But to take, you, might, you might be awesome. That's okay. But to take Dave's advice, most people that you're pitching, whenever you are talking to somebody, you should know exactly what you want out of them. Are you pitching Dave because you want to get money out of him? Are you pitching you know, Mike Butcher because you want a story out of him? What do you want? Or just a follow-up meeting, maybe, in or this That's country. also an option. So know what you want. And remember, people like these folks always get pitched. So you need to quickly help them validate or understand what's important about you, which I come back to what David said about user numbers, everything. You know, do you have paying customers? How much are they paying? How much money are you making? These are the things that we use as filters to figure out whether but, we're going to continue to talk. But the other thing is, you don't have to be amazing at everything. In fact, you actually only have to be amazing at one thing or even just modestly interesting at one thing. So for the copygram guys, I'd like, I wouldn't try and get me caught up in all the rest of the bullshit. I would just be like, hey, you know what? Actually, it's interesting that people will buy their own fucking photos. And you're like, I would be like, what? Yeah. And then you'd have me, right? Mm -hmm. Like that would be the one thing that you would need to say, and I would probably have a conversation with you. So like, don't over pitch what's interesting or differentiated about your company. Just find that one thing. Yeah. Give it up.